All right, we're on the final stretch now. I'm going to show you some different ways to communicate with your students and also how to add collaborative activities such as discussions or even video conferences. Uh, let's just start with announcements real quick because it's it's very simple to use. The announcements tool is linked in your course navigation menu if you kept that enabled. Even if it's grayed out, that just means that there's no announcements yet. So I'm going to click on that item in the course navigation menu and click plus announcement. And then you just fill out the title and the body of the announcement. I'll say, welcome to the course. And here's the regular rich text editor that you're used to, to seeing. Uh, I'll say, welcome to the course again. Again, you can add in uh, links, images, even embed a welcome video if you prefer. And then you can choose uh, uh, any attached file too if you like, like if your welcome announcement wants to attach a syllabus file. Uh, the next thing is this option that says delay posting. If I check that, I can choose a date for this announcement to go out or, or not. And then when you're done with the announcement, hit save. And then it will get emailed out all, to all your students, assuming the class has already started. If uh, class hasn't started yet, you may need to check your settings. But here at our school, by default, you can't do anything with students in Canvas until the start of the class. And once it's been saved, you see what the announcement looks like. If I click on announcements again, you'll see the list of all your announcements. In this case, there's only one. And if you were paying attention in the first video, we went to the settings and at the bottom of the settings, we checked a setting to add announcements to the top of the homepage. And there it is right there. That's, uh, I set it so it shows the only one of the most recent announcements posted in the course. So another way you can communicate with students was also covered in the first video. If you click on the inbox, there's an email client where you can send out emails to individual students or all students in a class or whatever you like. Lastly, one other way to contact students is by clicking the people icon. You can see all the students listed in your course, including when was their last activity. Uh, the, the three vertical dots has some uh, options too, but mainly you might want to click on a student's name and then we can see some options to contact that student or look at uh, their activity in the course. While we're in this people area, I just do want to show you uh, one other great feature of Canvas that uh, I've tried out in some of my classes is the groups feature. I'm going to click this tab. Again, we're un under people and then groups. And you can put students in different groups and they'll each, each group will get its own space where they can collaborate. And you can also uh, set your assignments to be for groups instead of individual students if you wish. So I'm going to first start with plus group set and say I want to call this discussion groups. Say I have a very large class and having 50 students or whatever discuss on one discussion board is kind of uh, overly complicated so I want to break them into groups of 10 people. I can say split students into uh, say five groups again pretending I have 50 students so it'll be 10 for each. And then I can hit save, but there are some other options. I can allow self sign up of groups or uh, create groups manually. By doing the default options here, it will randomly uh, put students into the five groups. I'm going to hit save and see it's randomly assigning students. In this case, there are no students because this is just an empty sandbox. And then it lists the five groups that it created. Uh, there's uh, three vertical dots next to each group too, so that you can explore, for example, the collaborative space that each group has. I can visit their group homepage and I see that this group one has their own announcements area where they, they can post announcements to each other, they get emailed to each other. They can create pages, they can create files and share them, they can create discussions, they can see the other people in their group, and they even have their own video conferencing tool that I'll show you in just a bit. But this is nice because when students are in a group, they can create their own video conference meetings. Say if they're working on a collaborative project and they can't meet face to face, they can video conference with each other using this tool or else try alternatives like Google Hangouts or Zoom. So, and one other issue with groups though is here, once you're in this group space though, it's not clear how to get out of it. I can of course hit the back button in the browser to go back to where I was. If I hit the hamburger menu, it just restores, this is basically a group menu now. I can quickly switch to a different group, but how do I get back to my course? Of course, I can go back to dashboard and back to the course, but also you can click this link up here that has the course code. And now I'm back at the main front page of my course, and I can go look at how to make discussions in the course too. I'm going to go to modules, 
and we're going to add a discussion activity. So let's say uh, a common thing that many people do is in week one, you might have students introduce each other in a discussion forum. So I'm going to hit plus next to week one, change this pop up to discussion and create a new discussion and I'll call it introduce yourself. And I'm going to add the item. And now we have an empty discussion not published. I'll go ahead and publish it. And I'll put it first because I want them that to be the first thing they do week one. And click on it. And if you're familiar with these, it's not going to be too complicated. Uh, you can edit this discussion to add a prompt, uh, some, some questions you want uh, students to answer, uh, perhaps uh, some criteria on how they'll be graded or how many replies you want them to do. If you scroll down, you almost always want to check this option that says allow threaded replies so that the replies get indented over and it's not just one big long list of replies to your prompts. Now, th and this here is where we make it graded. Uh, you don't create a separate assignment and then link it to this discussion board. To make a graded discussion activity, you just edit, you create a discussion and edit it and check this graded option here. Once I checked that option, it added this field below that says points possible. So say I may, maybe you want to make it 10 points. And uh, there's also an option here that says users must post before they see replies. In some cases, you may want to check that option so that they have to come up with their own thoughts and reply to your prompts before they can see what other people posted. Uh, and then if you can scroll down, you can see some other options. There's uh, also, here's uh, the group option that I was getting to before. If I did want to separate this discussion board into the five groups so that each group has their own discussion board, I can check this option, choose which group set I want to use, the discussion group set, and then uh, keep that set there before I save. But I'm going to uncheck it for now to just make it a regular discussion activity. Uh, there's peer reviews options too. I'm not going to get into that because that's very advanced. But then there's the due date. Unfortunately, Canvas does not have a way to set two due dates for a discussion, like say one due date for your first post and a second due date for your replies. Uh, so you might want to choose whether you want this due date to be the first deadline or the second. Sometimes I like to add a calendar event for the other deadline. And finally, I'll hit save. And now it's added a graded discussion activity to my course. You see, this is a graded discussion is highlighted at the top. Uh, they can hit reply to reply to your post and you can reply as well. Uh, sometimes in the description of the first discussion or two, I like to add a link to the Canvas instructor guide, the specific page in the, actually the Canvas student guide, I should mention, that shows students how to reply to a discussion. So they know to hit this reply button below, for example. Also, you might want to make sure that you are subscribed to a forum if you wish so that you can get an update to when students post things. Otherwise, you have to come back and check the discussion forum over and over again to see if anything new has been posted. And before we move on to the next thing, I do want to double check that this graded group discussion activity is set up correctly for my gradebook. So I'm going to go to Assignments, and I see that now that Introduce Yourself graded discussion has been added here, but it's been put in uh, uh, an incorrect group. So I'm going to create a new group called Discussions, say it's worth 15% of the grade, and save, and then I'm just going to drag that Introduce Yourself discussion into that category. And again, I can put these groups or categories in any order that I wish, and it will show up as columns in the gradebook. And finally, to show you one other fundamental feature before I show you a couple of advanced features just very briefly. Uh, if you're taking the Canvas Essentials course, you, you probably already saw this in a separate video I made. But if you want to add people like colleagues or uh, other people to your course, you want to click on people and click the plus people button. I usually change this radio button to say login ID so I don't have to type in the full email address of people I want to add. And then you want to enter a comma separated list of any people that you want to add to your course space. So say I just have this one person, then you want to choose what role they're in. One thing I didn't mention in that separate video is that if you're in a real course at our school or CRN course, you technically cannot add people in the student role or the teacher role because if they're not listed in our banner system as the as an enlisted student or as the official teacher, uh, they'll get basically kicked out of this course at the end of the day. So, But you can add someone as a designer, for example, that has access to everything except for the gradebook, or an observer who can only view things, or uh, a TA does have access to the gradebook. So if you do want to add someone and you do need their uh, access to the gradebook, you can add them as a TA. 
So I'll uh, again click designer for that role. Whoops, and I don't need to check that. And I'll hit next. And it confirms that I did add a valid person and I can then click add users and they'll be added to the list and they'll get an email inviting them to join the class. And two last advanced features then. Uh, I already hi, uh, mentioned the video conference feature in Canvas and you already saw that it's enabled by default when you use student groups. But what if you want to use the video conference tool yourself for your whole class? You would first want to enable this conference item uh, by going to settings and then navigation and I'm going to scroll down to find conferences in the disabled section and I can click enable and now it's moved it up here to the enabled section I can put it wherever I like but make sure you hit save at the bottom of this navigation to save your changes and now it's enabled in my menu I can click conferences and under the hood this is using a tool called big blue button uh, if I want to start a conference, I can hit plus conference and give a name for it. I'll say, maybe I want to make this virtual office hours. And you can choose whether you want this to be a timed conference, which is what it is uh, says by default. It's a 60 minute video conference. Or I can check this option that says no time limit, and that makes it an ongoing virtual conference space. Lastly, there is a checkbox here that says enable recording for this conference. At our school, all that does is record it uh, and leave the recording for 14 days. Uh, after 14 days, the recording goes away. So it's useful for students who maybe miss a video conference meeting, but not for permanent recordings. For permanent recordings, if you need to permanently record some video conference, I would use another alternative like Google Hangouts or Zoom. Uh, at the bottom is uh, a checkbox where it says invite all course members. By default, that's checked. You can uncheck it though and choose individual students if you don't want to invite the whole course. But I'll keep that checked and then click update. And now it's created uh, the space where the video conference will be, but I have to click start to start it. So I'll click that real quick just to show you the interface, but I'm not going to go into too many details for this tool. So I clicked the start button and it popped open a new tab. I did want to show this part because uh, it, it, it can be an obstacle. This tool right now does require Adobe Flash. I need to click on this in the middle and say allow. It's going to also require access to the microphone and the webcam. So let me pause this and, and get that loaded. So it's loaded the interface now and I can choose whether I want to listen only or, or access the microphone. I'm just going to do listen only since I'm recording the screencast at the same time. But if I did microphone, it would also pop up a dialogue asking for access to my microphone. It's giving a message, but this is the basic interface. Again, I'm not going to go into many details, but there's a button down here where you can upload a PowerPoint if you want to display a PowerPoint in the middle. You can use these tools on the right to draw and annotate over the screen or make a whiteboard. Uh, you can up at the top here choose whether to share your webcam or share your screen that right now that requires Java but in the future that should change on the left here you'd see a list of all the students in the meeting and you can control their access and then finally there's a text chat on the right here we can send messages by text and finally on the top right I'm gonna log out of this conference to say yes and whether or not you want to end the meeting too when you leave I'll just say yes for now to see what happens close this tab and go back and now you see the buttons here have changed in the conferences area I can rejoin it or I can just end the virtual office hours if I wish one last tool to show for those teaching face-to-face -face classes is the attendance tool I'm gonna again you want to go to settings and navigation again and look for the attendance tool and enable that and again hit save and this will, uh, I won't be able to show you much in the sandbox, but when you click on the attendance tool, you'll see a list of all your students. And it'll list them here. Uh, I usually, when I was using this tool, I would first mark all students as present and then go in and mark which students are absent or late or so on. Uh, it shows the date that you're taking attendance here on the right. So say if one day you uh, weren't able to take attendance with this tool, you could go back to a previous class date and then mark the attendance for that. When you use this tool, it will automatically add an assignment called uh, Roll Call and Attendance, I believe, and it's, it'll be worth 100 points. Again, it's not showing up here yet because I haven't used it. You can change what, how many points it's worth. You can put it in whatever group you want and in whatever order you want. So that's it for the main tools in Canvas that I want to show you. Uh, one last tip is if you are using, uh, if you are in our um, Canvas Essentials course, 
go to the home page of our course and click on the Canvas Guidebook for all the resources uh, that we've talked about in this course. And at the very bottom, I especially wanted to pick out, uh, point out this start of the semester checklist and this Canvas evaluation checklist. This has a checklist of things to make sure that you're uh, doing to get your course ready. And a particular one tool I want to show you, I'm going to leave student view and go back to my sandbox and go to settings. And I pointed this out in the first video, but just one last time is this link here under settings that says validate links and content. If you are working on multiple sections uh, at once and you're copying and pasting things between your course spaces, definitely use this tool because you may have copied uh, a bad link or a link to the wrong section or an image that's hosted in, in another course or things like that. Uh, it, hopefully though you'll end up with no problems like this, but if you do have any issues it will have links to the pages or anything that has problems that you need to fix. Thank you very much and again I hope you have a lot of fun using Canvas. Uh, good luck with your courses. Remember to contact uh, your faculty developers or IT support for any help you need or of course click the help button and you can chat with live Canvas support. They know more about Canvas than anyone. So again have fun.